tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to take this simple texture of this wall that has a little graffiti on it, we're going to dirty it up some, make it a night scene, and then add a neon light to it. So without further ado, let's get to it. First step, I want to go ahead and create a new layer, and I'm just going to name this Paint. On this layer, I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool, and I've already preloaded some brushes for splatters in to my brush. Now on my color palette, what I want to be able to do, and I'm just rearranging uh, my windows here, what I want to be able to do is go from color to color very quickly uh, with the different brushes that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and select the first brush, which you can see here is a little big. So I'm going to stay in the five to 600 range for maybe a little bit bigger than that for all these different brushes. And I'm just going to choose a color and go ahead and move to the next brush, choose a different color, and just kind of paint these splatters all over the place, varying the sizes, of course. And this is starting to look interesting. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, because I'm going to fade it out in the end a little bit anyway. Kind of like that. So with that, I'll go back to my layers palette, and I'm going to set this to soft light. Now you'll see here, it kind of just um, is washed out looking, and that's exactly what I want. So next, I'm going to go ahead and create another new layer, and this layer I'm going to call... Um, hang on, I can't see. I'm going to call this light one. And I will go ahead and grab my elliptical tool and I'm just going to draw out a selection like so. And I'm going to grab my paint bucket tool and fill that with black. I'll reset my colors by hitting D and then X and I'll select the gradient tool and I simply want to make sure that I have uh, white to transparent and then my gradient selected and I want to make a nice gradient like so. I then want to duplicate this so that I have three light boxes and I know these don't really look that good right now but in a second they will start to. And then after doing that, I want to go ahead and create a nice little thing coming down to each of these. So I'll create a new layer, fill that with black, and kind of center it up a little bit. And kind of just do that for the next one as well. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of doing it quickly so that I don't waste too much time on the video. And then I'm just going to name this layer Lights. Now, um, I want to go back to the background layer. And I'm going to duplicate that. And then I'm going to change this to Overlay. And I'll turn that opacity down a little bit. About 49%. I'll duplicate the background layer again, hide the back one, and on this layer I want to go to filter, render, and lighting effects. Now I already did this earlier so mine's already done for me to save time, but basically I created three spotlights here, and these spotlights are um, on my image in relative to the area they need to be for the lights of where they're shining. And these are all just spotlights I created with slightly different hues in the um, color here and here. And you can create more lights by clicking this light button and dragging it into your scene. Okay? And then you can delete them by selecting a light and then hitting delete, of course. So once you've got your light set up similar to this, go ahead and click OK. Your image will instantly be created like mine 
Now with that, I need to go to my lights layer, and I can see here on this one, I need to take it up a little bit so that the top of the light is shining um, where it's supposed to for all of these lights. And this will actually help me to vary um, the lights a little bit so that I can kind of get a more organic feel to the lights. And so like that, I've now got that done. And you can see here that this brings out the grain in my image a little bit more when by hiding and showing this overlay layer. And so I'm going to leave that on because I kind of like that. Now, we're done with the basic background. So I'm going to go ahead and create my text. And I'm just going to put the text in here, neon fun. It's best to use a font that is a cursive type of font for this, I've found. So be sure to do that. Make sure your font is completely white. And make sure you're on, a th basically you just want a super thin font. I'm gonna put mine on sharp. And then you can mess with these different waves and things if you'd like to uh, really mess with your uh, neon light. But I don't think I'll use any of these for this example, so. Go ahead and click on the uh, arrow tool here and kind of position your light where you're going to want. Now before I go any further, I'm going to create a new layer and then go to my um, uh, pen tool here. Make sure I'm in paths mode. Go ahead and start at my tip here. Create a nice little swoop that goes all the way past the rest of my stuff. Now, I'm going to go back to my brush tool. I'm going to reset my brushes and hit OK. I'll click on my number 5 brush here. Make sure white is my foreground. Make sure I'm on 100% hardness. Go back to my pen tool. Right click. Go to stroke path. Make sure simulate pressure is on. Hit OK. And then delete that path. And you'll see here I have a nice little thing for my uh, neon sign, and I'm actually going to move this up a little bit, and over as well to meet up right here a little bit better. So with that, I'll go ahead and double click it and go to Outer Glow. I'm going to choose the color of my neon light here, I can choose anything I'd like. I'm going to start with purple. Um, and that looks pretty good, but I think I'm going to need a little bit of a brighter color, so I'm going to go with this green. And I need to make sure my spread is around is around 10. And then my size, I'll go ahead and bump that up to approximately 25 in that range. And with that, I'll go ahead and drop the shadow and then hit OK. After that's done processing, I'll go ahead and right click this layer and copy layer style and then apply it to my font by pasting layer style. And you'll see here it's put on, but it looks a little funky and that's because we need to um, size this image. So let's go to image size and let's put in a size approximately a thousand pixels wide. Go to view actual pixels. And you'll see here that our font is now nice and sharp and crisp, but we still may want to adjust this a little bit. And we'll go ahead and just adjust this up to round 20. And we'll hit OK. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson by pixelforlife.com. Be sure to subscribe and comment below if you liked the lesson. Let us know some other tutorial ideas and visit our blog at pixelforlife.com. Thanks, guys.